back to you. Guys! Hey, there's no donuts. And you didn't buy any more? Did it ever occur to you that I might not have time to fulfill all your snacking needs because there might be something more important going on in my life? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm trying to finish my application to graduate school. I thought you were already in graduate school. Me too. I can't believe you guys. I've been taking undergraduate courses since September. You have no idea what I've been doing in school? Well, your teacher didn't send home any notes. <laughs> we assumed everything was fine. <laughs> Look, um, if you're not going to care about my life, would you just not care about my life quietly for a few days? You got it, Mom. No, Grandma, Mom's not here. Yeah, she's having lunch with that auntie. All right, I'll give her the message. Okay, Grandma, I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> okay, love you too. <laughs> Sherman's bar mitzvah's already over? No, but for me, it's in limbo. What do you mean? I, uh, split my pants doing the limbo. Oh, where's Mom? I need her to sew these back up so I can get back to the party. <laughs> She's not here. What am I gonna do? I don't know. I know. Staple me shut. <laughs> I hate to pry, fellas. What are you doing? Randy split his pants doing the limbo. And used a stapler to fix it? That's material on human flesh back there, pal. Let me get my hot glue gun. So long, Dad. Wait, wait, I'm not done yet. It goes in the back, but it doesn't. Lift it up to better up. Oh, no. oh Mom's home. Clean up, Mom. Hey, Mom. How was your day? It was fine until I... Went into the student lounge and saw a bunch of people watching Tool Time. You didn't notice the part when Dad called you an old hen now, did you? Yes, I did. <laughs> I guess I would make Dad a dead duck. Hi, Mom. Hi, guys. Hi, honey. What are you doing? Well, Dad's in the basement waiting for me to drop this tennis ball down the vent. He thinks it will knock the ring loose. All right, Mark, I'm all ready. Please, allow me. The old hen. <laughs> Hi, Henny. I mean, honey. You know, if you boys are sneaking over to your party, I'll take a coat. It's awfully chilly out. <laughs> How'd you know we were sneaking out? Well, Randy, I've long been a student of the Eastern philosophy of the Sufis, and their teachings have enabled me to attain a heightened sense of awareness. Plus, I saw you out of the corner of my eye. Could you just pretend you didn't see us? I'm afraid not. Your mother gave me very strict instructions. And five bucks an hour. I mean, why couldn't Mom just let us go to the party? I mean, she's totally screwing up our lives. Well, you boys have to realize that parents make rules to protect you, not to keep you from having a funky good time. I think they do it just to torture us. No, 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 Randy. They do it for very good reason. They want to instill a sense of discipline and responsibility in you so you can be a fine, upstanding citizen like they are. I got it. Hello? Yeah, one sec. It's Mr. Upstanding Citizen. He's in the slammer. What'd you get? Everybody's favorite, Polish food. Oh. All right, I love Polish food. I went down to Hamtramck stands. You were supposed to get pizza. Anybody can get pizza. You didn't. <laughs> you 
because on the way to get the pizza, I heard the call for kielbasa. You know, the last time you ate Polish food, you were up half the night. And in the bathroom the other half. That's because I made a pig out of myself. This time I didn't order so much. These things look great. Ah. Oh, these are great, Brad. You gotta try the duck butt soup. It's all right, Dad. Uh, for lunch, I had a chicken gut sandwich. <laughs> well, I hope you're just not gonna stuff yourself again. Why don't you get started on glumpkies? It's hard to put the brakes on. It's not the brakes I'm worried about. It's your full tank of gas. <laughs> all right. Bolts off. Mine's rusted on. All right, we need the pneumatic wrench, or I'll get a hot air gun. Oh, no, 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 no. Just making sure you guys still watch Tool Time. Guess what? My sister Carrie is coming to visit. Oh, no. Come on, Carrie's fun. She always brings you nice gifts from someplace exotic. Oh, yeah. Last year, she brought us knee socks and lederhosen. Hey, I don't like the lederhosen. Now all you need is some pantyhosen. <laughs> Say cheese. Cheese. Oh, perfect. You know, I brought those to you all the way from Thailand. You put them on your fingers, and then you do the traditional Thai dance called the Fawn Leb. We are a Fawn Leb and bunch of guys. <laughs> hey, Mark, come on. Let's see what you look like in your present. <laughs> I really don't know about this. We do. So, what can I do for you today, Tim? What? You still having trouble with your hearing? Harry, and I hate fish. Would you start selling fish? Ew. The doctor said his hearing will be coming back any day. Yeah, we came here to get a hacksaw blade, Harry. Oh, aisle three. What? Aisle three. So go pee. <laughs> are the hacksaw blades where they usually are? Check out this Swiss Army knife. You know what that thing is? That's a Swiss Army knife. <laughs> wow, it's got a magnifying glass, corkscrew, can opener. That's right, tweezers and a nail file. Yeah, for Al's mid-afternoon pedicure. <laughs> I'd give anything to have a knife this cool. Yeah, me too, but where are we gonna get 95 bucks? We could sell Mark. Hey, where are we gonna get the other 90? <laughs> Harry, I'll just take this one here. Gotta run, gotta get the boys to soccer practice. Okay, I'll put it on your tab. I don't need a cab, I got a car right up front. <laughs> I I'm gonna charge you double. <laughs> You're right. Al does look like Barney Rubble. Um, Al couldn't find that Swiss Army knife you guys were looking at yesterday. Do you have any idea who might have taken it? You know, maybe Harry took it to collect the insurance money. <laughs> How do you come up with these ideas? <laughs> Nobody's accusing anybody of anything, but if you know anything about this, this is a good time to tell us what you know. I know I didn't take it. Me either. Wasn't well, me. Brad? You've always wanted one of these things. Yeah, so is Randy. Somebody took it, it was probably him. Yeah, right, you're the thief. You're the one who took Dad's Hot Rod magazine with the babes on the cover. <laughs> what? The bevy of beauties from Chevy, you got that issue? <laughs> well, Randy took Mom's Victoria's Secret catalog. <laughs> well, that's mine, too. Can we get back to the knife? Look, we didn't take it, all right? How many times do we have to tell okay, you? Fine, okay, fine, you okay, fine. Just go back outside. It's all right. Do we believe him? Well, I hope they didn't take it. They said they didn't take it. Here, will you make yourself useful? I gotta take this upstairs. Yeah, but do we trust the kids that would take their dad's Victoria's Secret catalog? <laughs> I'm more worried that their dad is the one getting the Victoria's Secret catalog. <laughs> what are you wearing under there? A beautiful camisole and a silk thong. <laughs> what are you doing? Nothing. You were searching their room. No, I wasn't. I was looking for my issues of my hot rod magazine. Busty Babes and Buicks? Oh. <laughs> Another fine volume from your reference library. Some of yours in here, too. 
That's my recipe for tuna lima bean casserole. <laughs> Why would they hide that? Well, for me, I would have burned it. <laughs> what else of mine have they got in here? Mom? What are you doing? Putting your underwear away. In the desk drawer? Yes. It's something my mother taught me. This way, if you're doing your homework and you realize that you're not wearing and underwear, <laughs> then you don't have to walk all the way to the dresser drawer. My life is over. Really? I've got a pimple. I don't see anything. It's one of those under-the-skin ones. It's gonna come out tomorrow. Well, maybe we can throw it a coming-out party. Invite all the other pimples in the neighborhood. <laughs> Randy, you don't understand. Tomorrow night's my date with Jessica Lutz. What am I gonna do? Send her fries and a chocolate bar. I hope she breaks out, too. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Dad. I got a pimple on my nose and I got a date with Jessica Lutz. Come on, Brad. Don't worry about it. She's a real woman. She's not gonna nose a little zit on your nose. She's a 14-year-old girl. You're in trouble. Big, big trouble. <laughs> I tell you what works for me is a hot compress on there. You bring the zit to the surface, you pop it, ding dong, the zit is dead. Cool. Come on, Randy, let's go soak my pimple. Brad, I'm looking for a hobby, but that's not it. This is Space Command to Zoom. All systems are go for your message to Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, it's your birthday. I'm in charge of the stars, and I'm here to say, Hey, Jonathan, you're the big star today. My name is Zoom, and I live on the moon. But I came down to Earth just to sing you this tune. Because, Jonathan, it's your birthday today. A present for you I wanted to find An outer space creature, a one of a kind A wild womp Wop, or a kookle chew An apple drop or a buzzer snoo Or maybe a three-eyed tickle shay For your birthday Did you ask Ah, uh, what's a kookle chew? Well, up on the moon, it's nothing Your birthday. I searched behind the clouds and stars. I even zoomed my bike to Mars and met my friend, the saucer man. And he said, Hey, you Singing Jonathan, happy birthday. Singing Jonathan, happy birthday. Singing Jonathan, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jonathan. See you next year.